Okay, hello and welcome everyone. I would like to introduce Dr. Ego Shiva and she is going to be presenting some of her critical work today. So and with that, I will turn it over to you and you can explain more about um, yourself and what you do and about the, your presentation today. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Olga Gochiva and I'm an associate professor at the Department of Dermatology and Cutaneous Biology at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And I have a long stand, standing interest in the development of um, various um, the approaches including gene uh, therapy and the cell-based therapies for um, genetic um, disorders uh, affecting skin and muscles. And today it is my great pleasure uh, to provide you with a brief overview of our current progress uh, toward uh, developing adult uh, stem cell-based therapy for the congenital muscular dystrophies. And the topic of my today's presentation uh, would be uncovering mechanism of therapeutic stem cell migration to the CMD-affected muscles. Um, the collagen 6 uh, the collagen-6 and the laminin uh, alpha-2 deficiencies are considered two most common subtypes of congenital muscular dystrophies, and they share the same underlying uh, disease mechanism, such as deficiency or dysfunction of extracellular matrix proteins, such as collagen type 6 and the laminin alpha-2. Uh, both uh, disorders are very unique among other myopathies and considered as a hybrid disorders with the clinical features attributed to both uh, the muscle and the connective tissue. And very often, you know, they're called disorders of the myomatrix. So the currently, there is no specific treatment uh, for these disabling and life-threatening uh, disorders. Um, by virtue of their function, uh, there are two distinct types of the stem cells embryonic stem cells and the adult stem cells originated uh, either from the neonatal or adult tissues. ES cells is responsible for the development of embryo uh, from, from the single cell uh, by giving rise to specialized embryonic tissues and resulting ultimately in the developing uh, of the human fetus. Adult stem cell-based therapy emerged as a promising strategy, and um, adult stem cells, they act as a body's repair mechanism uh, by differentiating into specialized cells to replace damaged cells uh, with the healthy ones. So adult stem cells are undifferentiated cells, and they are capable of the self-renewal and giving rise to the other cell types under uh, specific um, exogenous or endogenous stimuli. Adult stem cell-based therapy for the broad spectrum of the diseases has been um, exploited in the numerous uh, the clinical trials. And as of today, uh, more than 300 uh, clinical trials on adult stem cell therapies have been conducted worldwide, with the majority of the studies um, utilizing bone marrow-derived um, mesenchymal stem cells, over 60% of the trials, also cells isolated from the neonatal uh, tissue, such as cord blood, placental blood cells, 20% um, of the trials, 7% of the trials utilizing um, adult stem cells isolated from the adipose tissue and the others. Also, 13% of these trials were conducted for the musculoskeletal conditions. And while the data on the efficacy of uh, the therapies are somewhat mixed, uh, these trials uh, collected phase one safety data uh, from many patients, and uh, no significant adverse events have been reported to date. Um, Adult stem cell therapy has been explored for um, different types of the muscular dystrophies, and the uh, majority of the studies were um, focused on the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And uh, in these studies, um, m most of them you know, addressed um, the utilization of ability of the muscle-derived uh, the stem cells or the progenitor cells. Um, 
such as myoblasts, uh, the site population cells, also myogenic endothelial cells, which are associated with the small capillaries, uh, mesoangioblasts, uh, adapts the cells associated with the large blood vessels. And also, you know, the cells from non-muscle tissues um, being explored as well. So the transplanted cells uh, showed limited ability uh, to regenerate muscle fibers despite the production of the therapeutic proteins by transplanted cells. But they did show reduction of the inflammation uh, through the trophic uh, effects elicited by uh, transplanted cells in the diseased muscle tissue. Um, effective uh, cellular therapy for extracellular matrix-related CMDs, such as uh, COL-6 and the LAMA-2 CMDs, mostly rests on the ability of the therapeutic cells to secrete normal extracellular proteins and to prevent the progression of the muscles uh, from the muscle cell, cell degeneration. And until recently, uh, the bone marrow, uh, the derived mesenchymal stem cells, were considered as a main source for the adult stem cells. And uh, recent advancements in the stem cell isolation protocols allowed uh, the discovery of alternative repository of the stem cells, such as uh, subcutaneous fat. And uh, similarly to the bone marrow derived um, mesenchymal stem cells, uh, adult stem cells isolated from the adipose tissue can differentiate into multiple lineages that can be obtained by less invasive methods um, such as liposuction. Uh, they have relatively low um, donor site morbidity and are available in the large quantities uh, for the procurement. Also, adipose-derived stem cells have potential as a immunoprivileged universal cells with the capacity for the allogeneic uh, transplantation and the reduced possibility of developing graft versus host disease. On the special note, uh, adipose-derived stem cells produce significant level of the collagen uh, type 6 protein and to less extent laminin alpha 2, making the cells readily available for the therapeutic intervention of the CMD uh, after local or the systemic uh, administration. A uh, couple years ago, we published proof of concept uh, data showing that human neonatal adipose-derived stem cells delivered intramuscularly can participate in the restoration of the collagen-6 deficiency in uh, the transgenic mice with the deficient uh, the collagen alpha-6 chain. So the briefly fluorescently labeled uh, the cells, stem cells from the adipose tissue, were intramuscularly uh, injected into gastrocnemius muscle of the neonatal collagen alpha-1 knockout mice. And the live imaging of the recipient mice detected red fluorescent signals of the labeled cells uh, transplanted in the limbs uh, throughout the studies, which um, continued um, for three months. Immunophenotypic uh, examination of the transplanted muscles showed uh, that intramuscular transplantation of xenogenic uh, the cells leads to the efficient engraftment of cells in the interstitial connective tissue of the skeletal muscle, as shown as the green uh, fluorescent signals on these images. Also, the level of cell engraftment uh, didn't change uh, significantly and sustained uh, the level about 20% up to three months after single transplant. Also, transplantation resulted in robust um, time-dependent engraftment and the continuous production of uh, the therapeutic uh, collagen, 6, uh, collagen 6 protein by transplanted cells and the wide distribution of the collagen-positive myofibers as shown um, in red and the green fluorescence, you know, on these images. Also, you know, we observed a two-fold increase in the collagen-positive myofibers uh, two months after transplantation as compared, you know, to the, uh, the, the week one after transplant. And um, last but not least, no significant immune reaction in the stem cell-treated muscles was observed. 
Uh, to extend uh, these findings, um, we conducted uh, the pilot studies to see whether um, the stem cells uh, from the adipose tissue can rescue uh, the laminin alpha-2 deficiency. And uh, we transplanted uh, the stem cells into gastrocnemius and uh, tibialis anterior muscles of the both uh, the hind limbs of four-week-old uh, DYW mouse. DYW mice have markedly reduced expression of truncated laminin alpha-2 chain, and they display severe muscular dystrophy and the peripheral neuropathy, and usually perish at the age of 10 weeks. Um, I'm going to show you the video, and you will see the DYW mouse, one month old, uh, which was injected with the stem cells. Uh, this is the typical presentation of the disease in the four-week-old DYW mouse. Uh, as you can see, both hind limbs are completely paralyzed. So the one week after transplantation, there was, um, you will see that, um, there was significant improvement in the mouse movement, um, standing on the both legs, uh, very good grooming habits. I don't understand. So two weeks after transplant, the mouse was happily running. Something going wrong with my movie. And the three weeks after transplantation, the animal was moving and standing, but we already started uh, to see some signs of the disease, slightly floppy movement, but the animal was able to run and stand on the both uh, transplanted. Um, legs. Immune um, fluorescent examination of uh, transplanted muscles uh, showed immune reactive uh, the laminin alpha 2 in both gastrocnemius and the TA muscles, but we still uh, detected significant cell infiltrate in interstitial space of individual myofibers. And also, you know, the examination of the muscles, you know, of the transplanted and the controlled non-transplanted limbs showed that increase in the muscle mass in the, the limbs um, injected, you know, with the transplanted cells. So this work is still ongoing, and we are in the process of transplanting uh, DYW animals at early stages of the disease to see whether the uh, progression of the muscle degeneration can be stopped uh, by uh, the cell transplantation. So together, um, our transplantation studies using both, you know, the collagen-6 and the LAMA-2 uh, animals suggested possibility of the durable uh, clinical benefit following single cell transplant and provided scientific rationale uh, for the developing systemic uh, stem cell therapy for the CMD. Um, clinical application of uh, cell-based therapies um, rely on the capacity of uh, therapeutic cells to home and engraft in the target tissue for a long period of time. And the significant obstacle in the designing stem cell-based therapy for the muscular dystrophies is the necessity to the enrich entire body musculature. So the prior works uh, presented substantial evidence uh, that the limited impact of systemically transplanted bone marrow and the muscle-derived stem cells in mouse models was um, partially due to poor still stem cell recruitment to the affected muscle tissue from the blood circulation. The key mechanism that regulates uh, the cell recruitment uh, to the distal anatomical sites uh, from the bloodstream, as well as, you know, the cell migration of the recruited cells inside affected tissues is called chemotaxis. And the chemotaxis depends on the molecules termed chemokines. So in the adult organism, expression of the most chemokines, which aid uh, the chemotaxis, are induced in response to the physiologic stress or damage. And being secreted, the chemokines will recruit 
variety of the cells, including leukocytes, uh, progenitor stem cells, and the other cell types to the disease or the damage sites as a part of the host defense and the repair mechanism. So in the healthy muscle, uh, diverse insults uh, provoking muscle damage and repair will trigger rapid and a significant uh, leukocyte recruitment uh, from the bloodstream to the affected site. So the muscle cells, such as myoblast and myofibers, will produce some the chemokines, so the molecules which are aiding, you know, the chemotactic processes. But the other resident cells, such as um, macrophages, um, they will be more dominant generators of the chemokines and inflammatory and the growth factors. So the produced chemotactic factors will draw um, in inflammatory cells, such as monocytes, macrophages, neutrophils, by process of the chemotaxis, um, to promote um, further tissue regeneration. In the case of the muscle dystrophies, sustain muscle fiber damage during muscle contractures will lead to the fiber degeneration accompanied by inflammation and significant immune infiltration. So, and the, during the significant muscle damage, cycles of the macrophage infiltration with inflammatory and anti-inflammatory properties will really determine the balance of the muscle repair and the fibrotic outcome. So in response to, to the fiber damage, activated muscle-owned stem cells called satellite cells will constantly compete with ongoing fibrotic processes that eventually will curb restoration of the muscle function and such repeated cycles of the damage, repair, fibrosis will inevitably lead to the satellite cell exhaustion and the fiber degeneration. So what we know now is that the migration of the cells through the blood across endothelial vasculature to the different organs including muscles will require active navigation, the process which termed homing. And the next video uh, will show you how neutrophils, as example, get recruited from the blood circulation in response to the inflammation. So this is the normal blood flow in which neutrophil, uh, we're going to see the neutrophil, travels down the blood vessels toward uh, inflammation site. So this is the inflammation in tissue. And the mast cell inside the inflamed tissue will secrete the histamine, which will result in the dilation of the blood vessels and the process, which is called vasodilation. So the vasodilation will slow the blood flow, the process called stasis, and it will aid the cell escape from the circulation. So endothelium will release a special molecule called P-selectin. And the neutrophil binding to endothelial wall will be aided by interaction of P-selectin with the special Cialil-Lewis uh, module. So the now neutrophil will not just flow in the bloodstream, but it will start a roll on the endothelium, but the process is still very weak. Meanwhile, in the inflamed tissue, macrophage will release cytokines and the chemokine, in this case, CXL8. Chemokine will bind to the endothelium, and the cytokines will stimulate production of adhesion molecules, ICOM and E-selectin. But the neutrophil will, is not ready yet to use these molecules. So the chemokine release from the inflamed tissue is the key. Now, rolling neutrophil will interact with chemokine 
through the receptor on its surface, and that will result in conformational changes of the molecule called integrin on the surface of the rolling cell from the low affinity to the high affinity. So the now neutrophil will search for the landing site and through the firm attachment to the endothelium and interaction of ICOM and integrin, it will activate PCOM molecule and in the fi final phase, interaction of this PCOM will lead to the migration of neutrophil through the endothelial wall inside the inflamed tissue, and that's the process called diabetes. So as you can see, migration, uh, attraction, or recruitment of the cells from the blood circulation to the inflamed tissue is very complex and uh, dynamic process. And uh, based on our knowledge of the leukocyte recruitment to the damaged inflamed tissue, we believe that stem cells can be recruited uh, to the CMD affected muscle by mechanisms similar to the inflammatory cells, such as rolling on the muscle vasculature, integrin dependent adhesion to the endothelial wall and diapedasis exiting the bloodstream, mediated by activation of chemokine receptors on the surface of the rolling stem cells, followed by transendothelial migration under influence of CMD muscle-derived chemokines. So the crucial step we've learned in the cell homing to the damaged muscle tissue, it's the interaction between chemokines secreted by muscles affected with CMD and the respective receptors expressed by the stem cells on their surface. So for the successful targeting of the stem cells to the skeletal muscle, first and foremost, we need to identify chemokines, which are expressed by muscle tissue affected by CMD, and then identify receptors on the surface of the stem cells able interacting with these CMD-derived chemokines. Currently, um, as far as I know, there are no data available regarding um, chemokine profile in the muscles of a CMD-affected patient. And until recently, one of the biggest barriers uh, blocking our progress in the CMD research was the lack of access to centralized bank of tissues from the people with the confirmed uh, CMD diagnosis. And the great efforts from the patient community, uh, Cure CMD Foundation, and the other venues helped to unlock uh, a huge bottleneck and made it possible for the scientists like me uh, to conduct desperately needed research in the CMD disease. And as a result of this effort, uh, congenital muscle disease um, international registry and the CMD tissue repository uh, was launched at Medical College of the Wisconsin a few years ago. And uh, through our interaction, with the CMD tissue repository and the Stacy Cassetta, who has been extremely helpful, we were able to get access to the several muscle biopsies uh, from the from the five patients uh, affected with uh, collagen six CMD, mainly ulnar congenital muscular dystrophies, and also we received three biopsies from the patients with the laminin deficiency. Uh, also using our connection with uh, Dr. Uh, Merlini um, from the Laboratory of Musculoskeletal Cell Biology in Bologna, Italy, um, we received additional biopsies from the patients um, of, um, with the Bethlehem myopathy, um, three biopsies from the Ulrich congenital muscular dystrophy patients, and the two are uh, the biopsies from the laminin alpha-2 patients. As you may know, almost all cell functions are executed by proteins. And so the analysis of uh, the 
protein profiles, or we call it proteomic profiles, is very, very crucial. And simultaneous detection of the multiple proteins uh, really provides powerful tool uh, for study, uh, to study individual molecules in the physiological and pathophysiological processes. So how it works. The process starts uh, by preparing um, muscle lysate uh, from the biopsy to release proteins uh, from the muscle tissue. And the fresh tissue is always better uh, for this analysis. Then this protein extract is incubated with capture antibodies representing 38 known uh, the human chemokines, which are spotted in the duplicates on the on nitrocellulose membrane. So after incubation with um, mm, biotinylated detection antibodies and the tryptavidin HRP uh, the rea and the reaction with the chemiluminescent reagent, membrane is, is, is exposed uh, to the x-ray film and the signal produced at each spot, um, at each capture spot, corresponds uh, to the amount of protein bound um, in that particular spot. Um, this slide representative of the proteomic profile of the muscle biopsies uh, from uh, some CMD patients, you know, which been analyzed by us. So what we did, you know, with these uh, images, uh, the pixel density on the developed X-ray film um, was collected and analyzed using uh, transmission mode scanning and the imaging software uh, scanalyzed um, software, which helps to convert uh, this pixel uh, density of each spot into numerical data. So, and the ones, the raw numerical densitometry data extracted, data transferred into Excel-based uh, analysis software tool where, you know, the background subtraction, normalization to the positive controls um, is completed. Um, comparative analysis of the muscle biopsies from the col 6 and the LAMA2 patients uh, showed elevated presence of the several other uh, chemokines, including CCL5, CXL7, CCL2, and CXL123. All identified molecules are known and prominent chemotactic factors uh, that activate and attract variety of the inflammatory cells uh, to the site of inflammation uh, produced by either tissue injury or the disease, as in the case of the CMD. And although our analysis demonstrated that chemokines could be associated with the CMD severity, for example, CCL5 was found to be lowest in um, the muscle biopsies um, of the patients with the Bethlehem myopathy and substantially higher in the biopsies from the um, uh, ulnar congenital muscular dystrophy or the merazine deficiency. Uh, prognostic value of uh, CCL5, this particular molecule, uh, will require further uh, statistical analysis in the larger cohort of patients with a careful phenotypic evaluation. And uh, this work uh, will continue. Uh, we will continue um, um, this work uh, to get more statistically relevant data. And we are, we are really hoping that uh, the CMD uh, TR uh, will be supportive. Also, um, we completed uh, the similar proteomic screens in skeletal muscles of the um, laminin alpha-2, uh, the collagen-6, and the healthy mice. So the biopsy in the laminin um, alpha-2 mice have been collected at different stages of the disease progression, starting at week one initial, um, initial stage of the disease uh, up to six weeks. Uh, which we call, you know, the terminal stage. Uh, since the muscle biopsies, um, the, I'm sorry, since the muscle phenotype um, of the collagen alpha-6 mice is much, much milder than the patients with the Ulrich congenital muscular dystrophy, we used um, cardiotoxin to injure the muscle of these transgenic animals to intensify uh, the muscle abnormality. And the array analysis um, 
revealed significant induction of the many uh, chemokines in the mouse muscles of the DYW, uh, the mice, uh, the mirazine deficient mice, as compared, you know, to the age matched um, the normal mice. And also, you know, in the collagen type 6, you know, the many uh, chemotactic molecules being altered significantly in the comparison to the normal mice. Um, we noticed that um, those chemokines identified in the LAMA2 animals were also present in the collagen 6 mice, suggesting that both uh, diseases share a similar set of the chemotactic signals at least, you know, in the um, marine muscle. Side-by-side -side comparison of the human and the mouse data of chemokine profiles uh, revealed that the mouse CMD uh, muscles produce wider range of the chemotactic molecules than the human tissue. However, some of the molecules were similar between the species and the presented clinical value. So the using chemokine receptor binding wheel, uh, we identified four potential chemotactic axes which can be used for efficient targeting stem cells into CMD muscles by matching identified chemokines uh, with uh, its cognate receptors. Our initial experiments uh, with the systemically administered stem cells in the col 6 mice showed very poor home inefficiency of the transplanted cells in the skeletal muscle. When we checked the status of the chemokine receptors in the freshly isolated uh, stem cells from the fat tissue, we found that cells are not homogeneous and they have relatively low uh, percentage of the cells with the active receptors, explaining actually at large why cells failed to reach the muscle tissue. So to overcome this limitation, we are currently in process of developing generalized selection strategy uh, for future transplantation studies by establishing um, tissue culture conditions when cells expressing specific receptor or receptors can be selected from unwanted cells and we are focusing primarily on the receptors uh, relevant to the CMD. Since uh, CCL2 chemokine was identified in the muscle biopsies of the patients and the animal models, um, it suggested that uh, CCL2 and corresponding receptor CCR2, CCL2, CCR2 axis can be used as a potential gradient for the targeting cells in the CMD muscle. To examine this gradient in vivo, first uh, we systemically transplanted genetically modified stem cells uniformly expressing CCR2 receptor, meaning that, you know, every single cell injected, you know, into mice was expressing CCR2 receptor. So the cells being injected via tail vein of the nude mice immediately followed by localized intramuscular administration of mouse chemokine, CCL2. And as expected, in the mice transplanted with the control stem cells, which have only 15% of cells positive for CCR2 receptor in the whole population. So this um, animal showed significant entrapment of the cells in lungs during the first 24 hours with no detectable engraftment, you know, in the muscle tissue. In the next um, two days, control mice didn't show any notizable signals indicating exiting of initially entrapped cells in lungs along unspecific axes within the body. So in the sharp contrast, as early as 24 hours after transplantation, migration of genetically engineered cells expressing CCR2 receptor um, along created chemotactic gradient was observed in the limb are uh, treated with uh, the chemokine and additional 48 hours led 
to more robust migration of the receptor expressing cells uh, from the bloodstream to the chemokine uh, treated muscle tissue. So overall, this proof of concept experiment provided strong support to our hypothesis that receptor engagement with the chemokine is essential uh, for the binding uh, to the endothelium and extravasation in the muscle tissue. So next, we obtained new data on the systemic transplantation of the stem cells selected to express uh, CMD muscle-specific chemokine receptors in the collagen alpha-1 mutant mice. Restitution of COL-6 function and skeletal muscles of the COL-6 mice was determined by systemic transplantation of CCR2 expressing cells or CXCR2 expressing cells on the physiological and pseudo-inflammatory conditions um, using uh, the CTX injury model. So the CTX again was used to intensify muscle damage due to very mild nature of the disease in the collagen 6 mouse model. So as you can see, left gastrocnemius mu um, the muscle was injected with CTX and the right uh, gastrocnemius muscle was injected with PBS only as a control for the natural homing followed by transplant 24 hours after injury. So to compare potential of the selected cells in normal and the disease conditions, the wild type mice, it's the, the, the down row, were treated in the similar fashion. And the live imaging of both uh, CTX treated and untreated control limbs was performed at day 4, 14, and 21 after transplant and with overall experiment concluded four weeks after transplantation. The red fluorescent signals of labeled stem cells were detectable in all transplanted animals, as you can see and persisted for the entire study, suggesting efficient migration and homing adipose-derived stem cells in the muscle environment under the influence of chemokines in homeostatic, um, no CTX, um, the treated limbs, as well as in the limbs after CTX injury, which is right there. Interestingly, uh, transplantation with uh, CXCR2 cells resulted in more efficient migration into limbs than CCR2 expressing cells. And um, immune staining of muscle biopsies revealed the presence of the collagen 6, uh, the positive myofibers, which was also greater in the, in the animals transplanted with the CXCR2 cells. So taken together, um, this uh, findings strongly support, again, our hypothesis that the stem cells uniformly expressing specific receptors can be efficiently targeted to the CMD skeletal muscles via engagement of specific uh, muscle uh, homing chemotactic gradient. So in our future studies, uh, we are planning to continue proton profiles of uh, chemotactic uh, molecules as well as cytokines in, in the biopsies uh, from the patients affected with the CMD. Also, uh, we will continue um, the long-term assessment of the local uh, stem cell transplantation in the animal models of the CMD. Um, chemotaxis mediated homing of most potent stem cell populations to the um, CMD affected muscles using animal models. And also we are interested in conducting um, some pilot studies on the efficacy of the stem cell um, and the Lazartan combinational therapy in the, in the mouse models. Um, I would like to thank you know, the people um, who contributed um, to this work, you know, members of my lab and the past members, also CMD um, tissue repository and specifically Stacy, Dr. Merlini, 
again, a big chunk of the data which I presented today been um, supported and passed by QRCMD Foundation. And of course, you know, this work would not be possible without patients and donors. And I have a special thank for, for the patients and donors. And thank you very much for your attention. Um, here is my contact information. If um, any of you have a questions, I will be glad to answer those. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was amazing. The slides and the uh, movie and the presentation and all your work. You, and it, I think it's like a victory oh, story of you know, the collaboration. When I get sufficient funding you know, to, to do this work, we're really, you know, the stretching now. <laughs> it's, it's been difficult, you know, in, 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 in past couple years. And, uh, but because, you know, I get so attached, you know, to, to the CMD story. And I think um, success, you know, which we had, you know, in past, um, I truly believe that this technology may be one step away from potential clinical trials. And we need this, you know, the little push um, to complete, you know, the, to make the work, you know, the more completed so the clinicians would be more convinced that, you know, we are ready uh, to do this, you know, um, in the patient. Mm -hmm. And it's also just an important, stressing the important collaboration between affected families and researchers because um, you can't do the work without the tissues and the patients can't get the answers that they're looking for without you doing the work. So. Absolutely. I want to thank, you know, thank you and also for the tissue repository, the Cure CMV, and the registry that, and um, your facility and, and your lab and all your work to get this collaboration going to you know, put yes. together. Yes, I, I so. hope so. But you know that that uh, that Stacy was just amazing. You know the help in me. I when I approached her, you know through the uh, Rachel, you know from the uh, Cure CMD, she advised me, you know to to contact her. Uh, she was she jumped right on and she said that you know um, we have you know the patients who are interested uh, donating you know the the partial biopsies you know for our research, but I. I think, you know, the story is really starting, you know, to get together because, you know, doing uh, this type of studies exclusively on the animal models um, don't get us too far. And we really need to see, you know, what's happening, you know, in, in, the, in the real world. And as I presented today, and I hope you, 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 you notice that as well, that comparing profiles, you know, of these molecules in the, in the human, in the patients, you know, the biopsies versus mice, it's pretty darn, you know, two different animals. And although, you know, we found some similarities, you know, between, you know, the, 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 the mouse and man, many molecules which were observed, you know, in the mice do not show up, you know, on the muscle biopsies from the patients. That's why I think, you know, this, uh, the clinical relevance is, the component of the clinical relevance is always have to be, you know, um, present. Otherwise, it makes our research um, useless. So I right. really hope that, you know, I, uh, we will be getting more biopsies because, you um, Mm. The material, you know, which we already analyzed, um, that might not be not enough for us, you know, to draw any solid conclusions as yet. And also, mm -hmm. I think um, if uh, the blood samples, you know, from the patients with the available biopsies would be available for us, that may give us, you know, a chance to look now. Because see, when 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 the tissue is so damaged. And as I show you in the movie that the chemokines, you know, they get uh, secreted, you know, inside, uh, inside the bloodstream, meaning that, you know, we can detect or use, you know, some of those molecules as a potential markers, you know, for the disease. And I think that it opens, you know, the multiple doors. And I really mm -hmm. hope that, you know, uh, we will be getting more biopsies and the patients, you know, will appreciate our effort. And they, they will see that, you know, we, we're getting somewhere with that. So. Well, we definitely have plans, I believe, for moving forward on that area for, at the SciFam conference. And that's definitely our goals for the future. Um, I actually just noticed that someone has a question, and they must not have had access 
to um, let me just take a look a question here okay okay so the question is related to I believe cord blood banking so I have a child who is two years old with Lama 2 and we're planning on having another child in the future would it be a good idea to bank the cord blood of the new baby to help treat our first child? Thank you for Absolutely. that question. Absolutely. Because if, if the newborn baby doesn't have a disease, um, Yes, absolutely. You know, this cord blood, you know, can be used. And actually, you know, the cord blood even better than, you know, from the, the fat tissue. Because uh, there is a very good correlation between um, um, correlation between neonatal stem cells versus, you know, the adult stem cells. Uh, neonatal, they, they better at every, every instance. Okay, and uh, if the, the second child is not affected, and because both kids, you know, they siblings, meaning that, you know, the, 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 it, it's a perfect donor. It's a perfect donor match. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. well, that's <laughs> very good. Okay, uh, great question. Gustavo. Thank you. This is Gustavo from QCND, and uh, I think uh, for the question from Linda, I think Linda maybe should be in contact with uh, Stacy uh, related to to um, uh, collect these cells. Because I know there are many companies doing it for um, some big profits, uh, so maybe she can bank them uh, in our repository. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, first, thank you very much, Olga. It was a fantastic presentation. And uh, it's uh, um, the biology of the, the concept in the, in the biology is great. Uh, one thing that uh, I was um, uh, having some doubts is when you, uh, you, you show a picture where the implanted cells uh, restore the collagen 6 matrix. Is that right. correct? And so the collagen 6, you know if it's expressed from the transplanted cells or yes. these cells uh, the, the collagen, um, the collagen, 6. collagen 6 alpha 1 mice uh, complete nulls. They do yes. not make collagen 6 whatsoever. Zero. Yes. So the so, only source for the collagen six is from the transplanted cells. And these cells, uh, what, what, what are the the phenotype of these cells? They, they are not muscle. They are adipocytes, right? Uh, this uh, we used xenogenic model um, for for the transplantation. We used human neonatal adipose derived stem cells from circumcised skin. Okay, but you you differentiate the cells before? No. No. So no. they grow as they are. I'll explain you why, because the collagen 6 is expressed exclusively by interstitial fibroblasts. Yes, that's why my confusion. Yes, and uh, the stem cells do not have to differentiate into any myogenic lineages whatsoever. So basically, you know, when we de delivered them um, locally, they acclimated themselves into endomysium and the perimysium where, you know, the normally fibroblasts, interstitial fibroblasts reside. So. Okay. Perfect. So, so for the, for, in this case, for LAMA2 and for collection 6, the, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, how you say the the repair uh, would be from uh, differently one one restoring the collagen six for the for the uh, call six uh, CMD but for the lama two they have you you hope the cells we hope the that you know uh, of course you know most likely you know the the, the main source for the lama two expression it's a myofibers yeah. So it's it's so the the protein comes you know from the other way, and because you know we've been doing quite few studies you know um, on the skin diseases you know with the laminins and everything so we we knew already that you know if we can deliver 
you know, the protein from the other side of the BMZ, it still may have, you know, its activity. And actually, you know, I don't know why the movie didn't, didn't work so well. Uh, we've been so impressed that, you know, after transplantation of, of the cells, you know, the mouse, uh, you've seen him, you know, the dragon, you know, the hind limbs. He was completely paralyzed. He was not using hind limbs whatsoever by four weeks. And the week after transplant, you know, he was running around like, you know, it, it's never happened to him. Yeah. But we did this experiment specifically on very severe state of the disease. Honestly, I didn't have much hope that, you know, we will be able to make this mouse running like he was running. It was too big surprise, you know, for us. Mm -hmm. I do not exclude the possibility that we have a trophic effect from the stem cells, and they actually known doing that very well. And um, we didn't rescue the llama to mouse. I think, you know, the disease went too far. And because, you know, the four weeks after transplant, he was, he was actually, you know, the giving up again. I believe that the early intervention, when the disease is not so advanced, you know, is not so aggressive, uh, delaying onset of the disease or disease progression by slowing down uh, may really have, you know, the big impact, you know, on the overall um, presentation. But... Uh, I think it's, it's, it's still too soon, you know, to tell. We, unfortunately, you know, we didn't have funds, you know, to push uh, the Lamin uh, story as much as the call six, but we are hoping that, you know, uh, we got some resources, you know, through the institutional support. So I'm hoping that, you know, we will be back on track, you know, with, with the Lamin uh, story. It's, it's just too soon to say now. It, it looks very promising. Whether, you know, the effect of, of movement and everything in this mouse was exclusively attributed by functioning of the protein or effect elicited by stem cells, it's, it's too premature to say for me. I don't want to, to make any assumptions at this point. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And, and also, I mean, the, uh, although you show us uh, for LAMA2 and Collagen6, uh, your your approach with uh, the induction from the uh, uh, um, chemo kinds uh, mm -hmm. it, it will be uh, usable usable for all the other CMDs too. Absolutely, I hope. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you too. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, for everyone listening, and to all the people that will be listening to this at a future time.